Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 I'm going to read first of all from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter number 25, entitled The Glories of Devotional Service. So, chapter 25 is dealing with Kapila Shiksha, the teachings of Lord Kapila, and they're very instructive. Prasangam, Prasangam, Ajaram, Ajaram, Pasham, Pasham, Atmana, Atmana, Kavayo, Kavayo, Vidu, Vidu, Eva, Eva, Sadu, Sadushu, Sadushu, Krito, Krito, Moksha, Moksha, Dwaram. Dwaram Apavritam Apavritam Prasangam Ajaram Pasham Prasangam Ajaram Pasham Atmana Kavayo Vidu Atmana Kavayo Vidu Sa Eva Sadushu Krito Sa Eva Sadushu Krito Moksha Dwaram Apavritam Moksha Dwaram Apavritam What meaning? Prasangam Prasangam Attachment Attachment Ajaram Ajaram Strong Strong Pasham Pasham Entanglement Entanglement Atmana, Atmana of the soul, of the soul, Kavayo, Kavayo, learned men, learned men, Vidu, Vidu, no, no, Saeva, Saeva, that same, that same, Sadushu, Sadushu, to the devotees, to the devotees. Krita, Krita apply, apply. Moksha Dwaram Moksha Dwaram the door of liberation the door of liberation Apavritam Apavritam open open translation every learned man knows very well that attachment for the material is the greatest entanglement of the spirit soul. But that same attachment, when applied to the self-realized devotees, opens the doors to liberation. Purport by Srila Prabhupada.
here it is clearly stated that attachment for one thing is the cause of bondage in conditioned life. And the same attachment, when applied to something else, opens the doors to liberation. Attachment cannot be killed. It has simply to be transferred. Attachment for material things is called material consciousness. And attachment for Krishna or the devotees is called Krishna consciousness. Consciousness, therefore, is the platform of attachment. It is clearly stated here that when we simply purify the consciousness from material consciousness to Krishna consciousness, we attain liberation. Despite the attachment that one should give, despite or despite the statement that one should give up attachment, desirelessness is not possible for a living entity. A living entity by constitution has the propensity to be attached to something. We see that if someone has no object of attachment, if he has no children, then he transfers the attachment to cats and dogs. This indicates that the propensity for attachment cannot be stopped. It must be utilized for the best purpose. Our attachment for material things perpetuates our conditioned state, but the same attachment when transferred to the Supreme Personality of Godhead or His devotee is the source of liberation. Om Magyana Timurandasya Kinantana Salakaya Sakshur Vindikamena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Manavistam Sabitamena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Katamayam Tadati Swapalandikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shah Shri Rupam Sagratatam Sahakana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sasvaitam Sahadutam Parijana Charitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahakana Lalita Shri Vishaka Vitam Sajam He Krishna Karna Sindhu Vita Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaskite Kapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sule Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Kadidana Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadara Srivasani Gaurata Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I read the sloka from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Kapila is speaking to his mother Devahuti. Now Devahuti is an interesting lady. She's 
one of the daughters of Swayambhuvamanu. And Swayambhuvamanu is the son of Lord Brahma. So at the beginning of the creation, meaning Satya Yuga, from Lord Brahma's body, different personalities appeared. And Swayambhuvamanu was one of them. Swayambhuvamanu and his good wife Satarupa, they appeared and they, their purpose was to help Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the creator and he wanted to see that the universe was filled up with population. So Swayambhuvamanu was one of the people who was to help Lord Brahma in this task to see that the, the world, the diff, not only this planet, but all the different planets in the universe were properly inhabited. So Swayambhuva Manu and his wife, they had three, three daughters, all very great ladies. There was Akuti, there was Prashuti, and there was Devahuti. And they had two sons also, who were also very great souls. So anyway, Devahuti was given in marriage to Kardama Muni. Now Devahuti, as we said, the daughter of Swayambhuva Manu, he was, Manu is, Manu is, in one day of Brahma there are 14 Manu. Swayambhuva Manu was the first Manu in this particular day of Brahma. So Swayambhuva Manu had a palace. He was not a poor man. He was living in a palace with great opulence. And he wanted to get, he was to get Devahuti married. And so it was arranged that Devahuti had heard about this one great yogi named Kardama Muni. Kardama Muni was doing austerities. He was practicing yoga. Now it was Satya Yuga. In Satya Yuga, people live a long life. They could live 100,000 years. Means one lakh, right? One lakh, 100,000. So, uh, Kardama Muni was doing yoga because, well, he wanted to purify himself. At the same time, he wanted to, to have a wife. He wanted to get married. So he performed some austerities before married life. This is the Vedic culture. Nowadays, people cannot imagine such things. They think, what? <laughs> Must be crazy. <laughs> but the Vedic culture is very practical, very scientific. It teaches people to control their mind and senses and to purify themselves and prepare for a better life. A better life, not only in this life, but in the next life also. So, Kardama Muni was doing yoga for 10,000 years. Because they lived 100,000, you know, just, we live, what, maybe, very rarely, people live 100. So, 10,000, Kardama Muni, 10,000 years out of 100,000 years, it's, it's what, 10%, right? So, 10% of 100, if you, we did yoga for 10 years, reasonable, good. Of course, now people, they go to school, then they go to college, and they're already 25 or something by the time they graduate. And then if you ask them to do yoga for 10 years, <laughs> they'll be too old. Right? Life is over. Anyway, Kadama Muni did yoga for 10,000 years. 
And then the, the Lord appeared to them and the Lord told them that I've arranged for a suitable girl to come who will make a good wife for you and you should accept her. And so it happens why Bhuvamanu came into the jungle on his chariot and he brought his daughter Devahuti with him. And Devahuti had heard about Kardama Muni from great yogis and sages who had come visiting their home. So she was attracted. She thought, yes, I want a husband like this man. And so her father arranged to bring her to the forest, to the ashram of Kardama Muni. He was living in the jungle, in the forest. And he had a nice simple ashram at the side of a, a lake where he could bathe regularly. And somehow he was living. And Twayambhuvamana brought his daughter and left her there with Kadama money. Of course, it was painful for Swayam Bhuvamano. that father is attached to the daughter, but he understood Kadama Muni is a great yogi, he will take care of my daughter. So he went back to his palace and left Devahuti there with Kadama Muni. And they did, they continued with their austerities, Kardama Muni continued with his practice, his spiritual practice. So at one point his wife approached him and requested that, you know, we should have a family. I would like to have a child. So Kardama Muni and his wife, they were doing austerities. And Kardama Muni considered that this kind of situation is not very good for family life. We shouldn't be so poor and so frugal. So Kardama Muni was a yogi and he had yoga powers and he used his yoga cities. He created a mansion, a huge mansion, just like here, right? <laughs> We have a nice mansion here. So he created this mansion. It could fly. And it, had, it, it didn't just have a little garden. It had parks and lakes. And there were all kinds of birds and beautiful birds and fragrant trees with flowers and fruits. And it was all growing. He created it all by his yoga cities. And there were also servants there also living and taking care of the people in the palace. So Kardama Muni created this mansion and then he arranged for his wife to bathe in the lake and to be rejuvenated. Just like, you know, they have these beauty parlors. You know, you can go to the beauty parlor and They'll put things on your skin and everything and they'll make you very, look young and radiant and everything, right? So, uh, Kardama Muni made his wife go and bathe in the lake and she bathed in the lake and then in the lake there were all of these different goddesses and they all took care of Devahuti. Her hair had become matted so they unmatted all of her hair, made her hair very nice and beautiful. They did everything to rejuvenate her and make her very attractive, as she should be for her husband, for the pleasure of her husband. And then the two of them got into the mansion and they went to travel. Just like when people get married often, they want to go for honeymoon, right? They'll go and travel. So Kardama Muni Devahuti, they had their aerial mansion. They didn't take Air Asia to fly. <laughs> <laughs> they had their own aerial mansion which could fly. And they didn't just go to Bangkok or Phuket or somewhere like that. But they went, they went to Mount Meru where the demigods go to enjoy. 
they went to these different places where the demigods come for their enjoyment. And in this way they were enjoying together. And in course of time, Devahuti had her children. She had nine daughters and one son. And that one son was an incarnation of God. He was Lord Kapila. And Lord Kapila is described how Lord Kapila preaches, he teaches the, the teachings of Sankhya Yoga. There are different systems taught in the Vedic literature, different philosophies are taught, like Patanjali teaches the yoga, and Gautama teaches logic, and Jaimini teaches Karma Mimamsa, Vyasadeva, he teaches Vedanta. So Lord Kapila, he teaches Sankhya. But you have to understand there are two Kapilas. One Kapila who is more well known is an atheist. <laughs> and he teaches an atheistic Sankhya Yoga. But the Kapila we are reading about here, we're talking about tonight, this Kapila is Devahuti Putra, the son of Devahuti. And he is the incarnation of the Lord. Actually, Lord Brahma had already predicted to Kadama Muni and Devahuti that they would have a son who would be an incarnation of God. And Prabhupada said, Prabhupada writes in purports in Srimad Bhagavatam that in family life, you want to have a child, you should have a child who is an incarnation of God. And if it's not an incarnation of God, then at least this should be their last life in the material world. In other words, in other words, this child will not take birth again. The mother and father should have that kind of consciousness when they're conceiving the child. That this child will not take birth again. They're, they're coming now as our child, but they won't come back. They'll, they'll become perfect in this life and go back to God. So, Lord Kapila, he's already perfect. He's the incarnation of God. And Kardama Muni, he wants to become perfect. So, he, after giving his wife nine daughters and one son. It was arranged, the nine daughters were given to great sages. They were each married and to, uh, to, uh, to great sages and the sages each took their wives with them. And Kardama Muni then said to his wife that now I'm leaving. I'm going to renounce. I'm taking the renounced order of life. In the Vedic system, there are stages in life, right? There is the brahmachari, the student life. Then there is the grihastha life. Then there is vanaprastha life. Vanaprastha life, it means retired life. But nowadays when people retire, what do they do? They read the newspaper all day. They go to the park and play some game or something. And they watch TV. They don't really take advantage of the retired life. Retirement is meant for preparing for the next life. And that was the tradition. So Kar Kar Dhamma Muni, he told his wife that now I'm going. And he left his wife, but he left her in the care of her son, Lord Kapila. The Vedic culture 
it is such that a wo woman should always be given protection. When she's young, she's protected by her father. Then she will be married and the husband will protect her. And then later on in life, she should be protected by her child. Hopefully she will have a son who will protect her. So that is the, but a woman should always be given that protection. She should not be left unprotected because she can be easily exploited and cheated and taken unfair advantage of. So ladies are meant to be protected. So Devahuti was left with her son, Lord Kapila. And she's naturally feeling some difficulty because she'd been living with her husband and they'd been traveling, they went to so many places and they enjoyed together a lot. They had a lot of pleasure together with each other. And then her husband left. And the children were given in marriage, the daughters had all gone, and she was left just with the son. So her mind was definitely disturbed that, oh, I've lost my husband. And my life has changed so much. But she's very fortunate because she has a son who is there, Lord Kapila. And Lord Kapila is instructing her how attachment has to be properly used. Attachment for the material is a cause of bondage. And the same attachment, if it's used in Krishna consciousness, then it will give us liberation. So attachment cannot be stopped. It's natural, it's nature to be attached. But we have to be careful what we're attached to. So Lord Kapila is going to go and explain to his mother that she should become attached to a sadhu, to a, a holy person, to a, a spiritual teacher, like a guru or something. She should develop that attachment. Not just the attachment to the flesh, the attachment to the family members, to the husband, like, the, like that. Because these relationships are material. So that is conditioned life. We want to cultivate spiritual life. And spiritual life means in relationship to Krishna, who is the supreme spiritual being. How to develop that attachment for Lord Krishna? Well, association is very important. You have to associate with sadhus. You have to come and hear from them regularly. Srila Prabhupada used to come. He came even here to Malaysia. He didn't come to Johor, but he did go to Kuala Lumpur and Penang, and he went to Ipoh, and he went to uh, some other place. So he came to spend some time here in Malaysia and he encouraged that, he said that we should have a nice temple here in Malaysia. And now, gradually, so many devotees are here in Malaysia and we want to develop nice temples also. Uh, not just one, but we want to have many temples, right? We want to make temples in everyone's heart. We want to make the heart clean, and then we will make a nice temple in the heart, and 
we will ask Radha and Krishna to sit in the heart. That will be the perfection of the Krishna consciousness movement. To give everyone a temple in their heart. So Lord Kapila is instructing his mother that she has to become attached not just simply to the husband, but she has to become attached to a sadhu. Her husband had been with her, but now he's gone. That's the nature of material relationships. They have a beginning and an end. Of course, we don't like it, we find it painful, but we have to replace the attachment. Lord Kapila is telling his mother that the attachment for the spiritual will help to make your life perfect. You have to become attached to the holy people. You have to hear from them. And Lord Kapila goes on to describe who are actually holy people. He mentions the qualities of a holy person. Titikshava karunika suridam sarvadehinam ajata shatravam shantu sadhava sadhu bhushana. Sadhu bhushana means the ornaments of a sadhu. Just like ladies will wear ornaments. They will have necklaces and bracelets and rings, ornaments. In the same way, a sadhu, a holy person, is recognized by their ornaments. Not just by the dress, not just by the name, but you have to see the ornaments of the sadhu. The ornaments, tatikshava, tolerance. Karunika, mercy, these two qualities are very important. We see the example of Lord Jesus Christ, how Lord Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross, but he did not have any bitterness to the people. Rather, he prayed to God that, please forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And similarly, in our own tradition, we have the example of Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was a Mohammedan, but he was chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. So the, ru the ruler, somehow people made a case against him, and he was brought to court, and they said that He's a Mohammedan and he's chanting this Hindu prayer. So the judge told him, you should not do that. But Haridas Thakur said, well, so many Hindus have become Mohammedans. What is the harm if I, one Mohammedan, become a Hindu? But the judge said, no, that's, you can, I cannot accept it. You have to stop this. But Haridas said, but I cannot. I cannot stop chanting the holy name. It's my nature that I have to chant. I cannot stop chanting. So then, just said then, you will have to be beaten. And you will have to be beaten in 22 marketplaces. In other words, it was like a death sentence. He was meant to be beaten to death. So Haridas Thakur was taken to the marketplace and he was beaten in 22 marketplaces. But he never stopped chanting the holy name. And he never had any bitterness towards the people who were beating him. Rather he prayed to the Lord not to harm them. Because he was worried that because they're beating me, the Lord may be angry, he may take action against them. But Haridas was such a great 
So he was so tolerant that he prayed to God, please forgive them. Don't punish them. And then another example, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very angry when Lord Nityananda was attacked. Lord Nityananda had approached two drunkards and requested them to chant the holy name. And they were drunk, so one of them took a pot of wine and hit Lord Nityananda on the head with it and drew blood from his forehead. Lord Chaitanya heard. Lord Chaitanya was so angry, he came running there and he was going to kill these two people. But Lord Nityananda restrained him and told him that, no, my Lord, in this age you have to be merciful. In other ages, Lord Krishna would kill the demon. And Lord Rama also killed many rakshasas and demons. But in this age, Kali Yuga, there are so many demons that you have to tolerate. You cannot kill them. Rather, we have to make the demons devotees. Of course, it's not an easy task. But that should be the mark. So tolerance and karuni, mercy, just like Srila Prabhupada gave a lot of mercy. He traveled everywhere to give mercy, to bring the message of Krishna to people, to awaken them to Krishna consciousness and to teach them how to worship Krishna. Asadu has no enemy, Ajanta Shatru. His enemy is never born. Someone may say, he's my enemy. But the sadhu will not say, he's my enemy. Sadhu will be has no enemy. He sees everyone equally. He sees Krishna in everyone. And the sadhu also knows the Shastra. He knows the scriptures and he follows the teachings of the scriptures. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had an interesting conversation with one of his followers named Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai was born in a Sudra family. He was not born in a high-class Brahmin family, rather he was born in a low in a low status. And he was in family life, he was not renounced. And Lord Chaitanya, he was born in a Brahmin family, and he was renounced, he was a sannyasi. So he met with Ramananda Roy. And when the two met, Lord Chaitanya would ask questions to him. And Ramananda Roy said, Oh, this is not good. He said, I'm, I'm much lower than you. I should be questioning you. But Lord Chaitanya said, No. He said, Kipa vipra, kipa nasi, sudra ke ninai, ye Krishna tadbhavet, se guru hai. The meaning is, it does not matter what position you're born in. You may be a sannyasi, you may be renounced, you may be a brahman, you may be low born. It does, that's not important. That is external. What is important is that you know Krishna Tattva. You should know the science of Krishna. And you should be willing to give it to others, to explain it to other people. That is very important. He said, then you can be guru, because you know the science of Krishna. If you don't know the science of Krishna, even though you're born in a big family, very 
big birth, Brahman and no. But if you don't know the science of Krishna, then you cannot be the spiritual teacher. It's not the birth which is important. But what is important is the qualities. So we were telling, you can recognize the person by the ornaments, by the qualities. And these qualities are being described here in Srimad Bhagavatam. We want all of you to understand how to recognize the sadhu. Hmm. Lord Chaitanya was also asked sometimes, he was asked that, how to recognize a devotee? Lord Chaitanya replied, first of all, he said, anyone who chants Hare Krishna, who chants the holy name even one time, he should be considered a devotee. But then, Another time, when he was asked the same question, how to recognize a devotee, Lord Chaitanya said, if someone regularly chants the holy name, then he is a devotee. And then another time, he was asked the same question, and that the third time he said, that person, simply by seeing him, makes other people chant the holy name. He is a devotee. So you should understand the meaning is there are different levels of devotees. Just like sadhus, holy men, there are different levels. It's not that everyone is on the same level. We say there is kanistha, there is madhyama, and there is Uttama. There are different levels of devotees. Kanista means junior, Madhyam means intermediate, and Uttama means topmost. There are different levels of devotees, different levels of sadhus. We have to understand the teaching of Krishna consciousness. These things are all explained to us in Srila Prabhupada's books. And we encourage all of you, try to read Srila Prabhupada's books. If you don't have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam, you can, you can get a set. And keep a whole set in your home. And read every day for the rest of your life. And in this way, you can make your life Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Is there any question, anyone? Any question, Prabhu? No? Prabhu, question? No?